Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 battle series. We are here again today kicking off with this team that we started with at the start of this week on Monday and uh, we're going to continue on with it today like I say. It's been a lot of fun so far. We had a great episode yesterday. If you've missed that I will link it up there for you. You can go and check out the hacks in yesterday's episode. But just to recap the team before we get into it today. We've got the Kyogre, the Tapakoko, the Mega Ray, Incineroar, Tornadus and Cartana. So really Really nice balanced team as I've said already at the start of the week trick room does scare me a little bit but it's something that we can maybe look at when we get a bit further into a few matches later this week and maybe change things up next week or if you'd prefer to uh, see another archetype played next week but uh, as always let me know in the, the comment section down below what you would prefer to see if you want to see this team played a little bit more or if you would like to see another archetype explored because we've got lots of time to play around with archetypes and things like that but at the same time, I do realise that Sword and Shield will be out mid-November, well, early November. So then we'll probably move from this series into just Sword and Shield stuff because I'm very excited about it and uh, all that. And I haven't even introduced myself for all of you new viewers out there. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and uh, we'll be kicking into doing lots of Pokemon VGC stuff this season. Got lots planned, so uh, very exciting. Without further ado, though... Because I've been rabbiting on for a little while now, we'll get straight into the battles today. We're 4 and 0 at the minute, so that's not too bad with the team. I know we're low level, low ladder, low level, um, but at the same time, wins are wins. And uh, although I think one in yesterday, we probably were a bit fortunate to, uh, to take the win there. And we explained why overcompensating certain places in that match meant that it was a little bit more difficult than it really should have been and I think it definitely a match that we could have won um, but uh, if we just played a bit more sensibly but uh, these are the things that we will look at when we're playing through this battle series you know what the mind games can cost you in certain places and just to make the safer players at all times so uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent today um, but while we're waiting, we can discuss Sheffield Regionals. Like I said the other day that uh, I was pre-recording while that was going on and uh, we saw the result from there over the weekend. It was uh, Sirkin and Baz in the final and a really good final. A big shout out to Billa as well for um, streaming that on Twitch. Uh, Twitch? <laughs> Twitter. Uh, he did a live stream on there so we were able to see. And uh, if I can find the link, I will link it down below so you can go and check that out. It was a really good final and uh, massive congratulations to Baz as well. Really nice nice seeing him taking a regional title as well with a very fun team and uh, we've got elements of this in our first match today against Pablo so we'll hop straight over into team preview so our first opponent today running a team of Mewtwo, Tapu Lele, Kyogre, Incineroar, Ferrothorn and Salamence so the Mega on the team is either going to be Salamence or Mega Mewtwo it's likely that it could be Dual but I would say probably Mega Salamence although I don't know I think it probably is Dual Megas and you probably choose one depending on the team that you're coming up against in this matchup I would say we'll probably see Mega Mewtwo Scarf Lele makes up a nice combination with that Mewtwo obviously the Psychic type abuse there is very prominent and um, and takes away our advantage to use any sort of prankster or fake out abilities on our side of things then you've got the Kyogre which is the the thing that's going to really cause us quite a few problems uh Ferrothorn as well for our own Kyogre um but uh I think Tailwind here is pretty important for us um so Tornadus here definitely something I do want to bring uh, just to get the jump it's a guaranteed way to be able to um, get speed control going. I think Tapu Koko is very good for us here. It hits the Salamence, the Kyogre for good damage and the terrain support is incredible. Uh, I'm going to opt to go Rayquaza and Kyogre here even though you, you do see a Ferrothorn uh, and the Incineroar could be good. I don't want to be in the end situation where the rain's up and I can't use a fire attack. So we're looking and we'll see how we get into this one today. I'm planning on doing some more um, showdown content as well so that should be up on the channel soon we're playing other archetypes and things and that's what one of the things i want to do this early series before we go into sword and shield is try and explore as many different archetypes as possible because there's so many that we didn't touch upon and um, when we were covering ultra in the 19 season so there's there's loads to do we are going to see ferrothorn and kyogre come out for my opponent um 
Kyogre feels like so threatened right now from just that type of Coco because we can just go Thunder into that slot. Um, it's so easy for them to switch out though, that's the thing. Um, and just leave the Ferrothorn kind of open to do whatever it wants. Uh, the, the other option is we could potentially uh, Volt Switch into our Rayquaza, which would give us a nice a nice advantage, I guess, going forward. Um, there's also the option to Tailwind, uh, to Taunt the Ferrothorn as well, to shut down the Leech Seed, which I'd expect them to try and do, although they'll probably just throw a Gyro Ball out. Um, but the safe play, I think, here is always going to be just going for a Thunder into the Kyogre and just throwing a Tailwind up. Um, we're not messing about here. We're not going to see any Protects either, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, we do get the Tailwind up. There's the Thunder. This should do a nice chunk. It won't pick up the Knockout, but uh, any damage onto Kyogre is always good damage. And uh, boosted by that Electric Terrain, doing some big damage there. And the Thunder coming out from the Kyogre. Interesting. Boosted by the Electric Terrain. Let's see if we can take this. No, no, no. But uh, that's fine, because one of the things that uh, I do appreciate here is that... Um, we do get rid of Tornadus, which is a bit unfortunate, but it does open the door for Rayquaza to hit the field now. And uh, I think this next turn we can probably just go for a Vol Switch out onto the Kyogre slot. So we've got our terrain for later in the game and go for a Banded Dragon Ascent into the Ferrothorn. I'm not sure if a Banded Dragon Ascent will pick up the knockout. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, you know what? We're playing a really explosive game here. This could be over very quickly. Um, but if Rayquaza gets knocked out in return from a Gyro Ball here, then uh, we do get Kyogre and we still got Tailwind up. So we just got to make sure we make use of these last few turns of Tailwind. The thing to worry about now, I think, is that the Psychic Terrain and Mewtwo could be in the back. Like Tapu Lele Mewtwo could be in the back, which could be problematic for us extremely problematic. If we get the knockout on Ferrothorn here, that would be incredible. I'd imagine the Kyogre to protect. So it might have been in hindsight better to go for the Volt Switch into Ferrothorn if we want that switch, but then do we want to chance Kyogre coming in on a Power Whip? Not really. There's a Volt Switch. Kyogre going to go down now, so that's brilliant. Um, we are going to chance Kyogre coming in on a Power Whip anyway, but I would imagine you're probably going to see uh, the Gyro Ball into Rayquaza here over everything else. Um, so we'll get Kyogre out onto the field. Maybe a Thunder would have just been better. It's just I was kind of conscious that I want to keep Tapu Koko. If the Tapu Lele is in the back, we, we want to make sure that their terrain is not active, especially when that Mewtwo comes out. That's something you kind of want to keep in the back of your mind. The Heavy Rain does activate with that Primordial Sea, and here's the Banded Dragon Ascent. Come on, be enough. Be enough, please. It's going to be close, I know that. Oh, it's so close! It's too close! <laughs> we'll probably lose Ray now. Uh, Gyro Ball. Oh, do you want to get Ray? Yeah, there we go. Makes a smart choice. Oh, we survive! Okay, that's good. And Ferrothorn's not really a threat now because it's so low health. Whatever comes in, as well as it, especially if it's Lele, because if it's Scarfed Lele that can't protect, then we can just Dragon Ascent Water Spout and get around it that way. This is a mad match though to open up with. I mean there's been no protect. It's just been full out. Okay, we're going to see if Incinero come out, which is fine. Um, where do you fake out though? Like, I think you have to fake out Kyogre here. Uh, which opens the door for us to go for uh, hmm. What's going to be in the back? It's going to be the Mewtwo, right? It's going to be the Mewtwo. I think, yeah. So we could potentially just just bring in Coco and protect Kyogre here. We've got the option to go for an attack with Rayquaza because um, we could drag an Ascent for sure into the Ferrothorn thinking that the Fake Out's coming into... Oh, it's Salamence. Huh. Okay. I really don't mind that at all, because we've got the Twinkle Tackle and Water Spout next turn uh, after we burn this Fake Out, so that is fine. We've definitely seen a Fake Out here. Um, I'd imagine it's into the Kyogre, though. I'm surprised... Oh, wow, it's not. It's into Coco. Hmm, interesting. Okay, we've got the 
the Therium. So we'll Twinkle Tackle into the Salamence. That'll be more than enough to take that down. I'm really surprised that we haven't seen Tapu Lele or Mewtwo here. Um, especially against our kind of team makeup where we haven't got the fastest of Pokemon outside of Tapu Koko. Um, and especially if you are running something like Tapu Lele that is scarfed and that, that Mewtwo, if it is Mega as well, then it outspeeds everything on our team. And you can really take advantage of that instant speed uh, that your team's got access to rather than relying on speed control like we have to do. Um, so that does surprise me. I can. It makes sense bringing the Ferrothorn against us because Ferrothorn generally is just a pain to deal with for the majority of Rayoga teams. Uh, especially because you've got the protection from the rain and you're wanting to utilize those fire type attacks initially anyway. I'm going to see the Salamence Mega Evolve. Salamence does protect though. Um, I mean, still still fine though isn't it um we'll get some damage off onto it now i don't think it was worth not going for the twinkle tackle here and predicting the protect because if we went for a dazzle and a water spout salamence could survive that and get a tailwind up and then even though like still the next turn it's not going to be in the best position we got scald so we can take down ferrothorn i think the match is kind of over whatever we do here so we could have sat on the, the z move uh, made it a bit easier for ourselves, but I mean at this point kind of fine We've got Ray in the back as well to come in with extreme speed if we need to um, and after a dazzle You know that Salamence is gonna be an extreme speed range and a scald uh, Will be 100% enough damage to uh, pick up the, the knockout onto the Ferrothorn or an ice beam whatever we throw out to it um, so we'll go for that dazzle and we will go for a Scald into the Ferrothorn, but this should be pretty much tied up now. Um, a double edge from Salamence, unless it's like a huge crit. And even then, I don't think it takes out a Kyogre. Um, so there's the Dazzle. Is it enough to get the Mints? No, not quite. Um, but like I said, the, the extreme speed we've got in the back. Hyper Voice coming out. Um, we'll take down Coco. Kyogre will get the Ferrothorn, and then, yeah, we just got ready to come in, extreme speed, and uh, that will be game, so we're picking up another another victory, which is very nice for us to start the day with, and um, the electric train disappearing, and Ray going to hit the field once more. I, would have, I wonder, there's a question like, I always think, do I want to run Adamant Band, Ray, or Jolly? I always prefer Jolly because then you know you've got the jump on, like the majority of other things in the format um, that could otherwise maybe outspeed you if you got Adamant. Uh, but the extra power would be incredible. Uh, but this is why I always like to, to try and implement Helping Hand next to Ray. Like we saw on the Battle Spot series that I was doing, had Serena there with Faint and Helping Hand. And I think that's like the ultimate support for Banded Rayquaza, personally. Um, because then you've got like devastating power that you can pick up knockouts on, on pretty much everything. You're not missing like we were there with a the Ferrothorn. And you kind of see in that match, if we'd been able to pick up the knockout on Ferrothorn, how much easier that match would have been to, to kind of close up. And um, it was only the fact that it survived that uh, we, we it dragged on a little longer. But like I say, we're off to a good start. We're 5-0 at the minute, which is... Which is no surprise with this sort of build. It's very solid and um, it's doing the job. So yeah, and uh, I did get asked in comments. I can't remember who it was, but uh, thank you for all the comments you've had over the last couple of days as well. Um, if I was planning on going to uh, the regional in Germany at the end of this month. And unfortunately, um, just with Thea at the minute, I'm not really able to travel abroad um, just because kind of Thea's like, pretty much brand new <laughs> and we're still kind of managing that uh, between me and Tash so um, no I won't be going to any regionals outside of the UK um, until the new year so um, no regionals for me which is sad hopefully there'll be something announced in the UK again but I don't think there's going to be anything outside of PCs and MSSs, but I've got a bunch of those coming up, so that's that's pretty exciting. So we can grind the local scene um, and start getting some points on the board. Um, and it was mad. I was actually looking at and 
please don't mind me speaking over us searching for an opponent it's quite interesting but I was looking at like how you can obtain that 300 points for for us Europeans this year uh, for your world's invite to London next uh, next year next summer and uh, what was it it was I worked it out <laughs> really like mediocre finishes so you can finish second in two PCs I think four top eights in so top eight in four MSS a top 32 finish at a regional and a top 64 finish at uh, an international championships totally doable by anyone that puts a time in in my opinion and you will be over 300 points so you don't even need to really be winning events to get that invite you just need to be attending be a little bit consistent get some decent finishes um, and uh, you'll easily pick up that invite so there's no reason for anyone to not believe that they can do that because I think like I say with a bit of time and investment and uh, just getting some help from people that you know you know if you need help from me give me a shout I'm on Twitter and all places like that so um, but yeah I think like just that time investment if you want to play the world championships you're in Europe uh, you find it difficult in previous years going to America or paying for a trip or whatever like that I can totally relate to that uh, from early years in my plane life um, then this is such a good opportunity for you just make sure that you, you you check out where the events are there's some great groups on Facebook I can link all those down below if you want in later episodes this week so let me know in the comment section if you want to know all the events in the UK particularly are posted there so you know and you can schedule around them it's it's really useful and really helpful um, and obviously the Pokemon website as well um, but yes so it's not really that difficult it's crazy to think that you can have two second finishes four top eight finishes in an MSS a top 32 in a regional and a top 64 in an international championships and uh, you've got your invite so there you go uh, easy peasy not so easy obviously but uh, pretty easy it's easier than going out and having to win every single event like back in like 2010 you had to finish in the top two of a national championships to get a paid invite and that was it and there was only three nationals in in circulation you had germany spain and the uk and uh, if you didn't get top two in any of those one three events then you did not get a paid invite to the world championships third and fourth got invites but you had to pay your own way so i got my invite finishing third you can nats that year um but then it's like when Worlds is in Hawaii, it's a lot of money when you don't, <laughs> when I'm still studying and things like that. So, And there was no stipends back then, so it was a lot more difficult. Uh, similar story again, uh, 2011, 12 and 13. 13 when I got uh, my first paid invite to Vancouver World Championships that year, which was incredible. It was such a good uh, World Championships. Uh, that was, yeah, top eight, I think, UK Nats that year, and top four at the other two uh, national championships. I think Italy and Germany were the other two that year. Um, and then it kind of started changing with a CP payout in the next season, 2014, and then from there it's all moved on. And I apologise if you can hear grass cutting in whatever lawnmowers my neighbours are having their, uh, their garden landscaped, it sounds like. Um, but it is going to take a little bit longer to find that next opponent So I'm going to cut it out here and we'll come back when we find our next opponent And we've got our next opponent finally of the episode I've been searching for, I don't know, the last 10 minutes It's crazy, there's like no one on, it's weird I'll hop over into team preview and let's have a look at what we're playing against Okay, so our next opponent is running a team of Salamence, Kangaskhan, Tapalele, Duskmin, Necrozma, Groudon, and Umbreon. So, uh, it looks like the second place um, placed uh, team at the World Championships this year. Uh, we've got the Duskmin and the Groudon uh, as the restricted pair. We've got Salamence as the Mega along with the Kangaskhan. So, the dual Mega there. Uh, we've got Ultra Necrozma and Duskman as well, uh, Tailwind, Trick Room, all the shenanigans here, uh, Tapu Lele as well. Uh, the big thing that I really want to be able to get rid of is going to be that uh, Umbreon speed control is going to be really important for us in this match. Um, <clears throat> but we've got to watch out for Trick Room as well. So, ah, what are we going to do? Uh, I will bring Tornadus. I think uh, Tornadus can be very, very useful for us. We obviously need Kyogre. Um, I think Incineroar, Ka, Tapu Koko, 
Ah, do we want Tapu Koko though? It's just the terrain. I, I want to be able to change the terrain. Um, that's the big reason why I'd want to bring it. But then we're kind of leaving out Rayquaza. But Tapu Koko can be pretty good in this match, I think, anyway. Um, Cortana could be also very good, as well as Rayquaza. I'm locking in, because otherwise we're just going to... Otherwise we're going to end up with just a random mix and nothing right. You know, the, the one thing that I would say is with Rayquaza, it does offer us a nice means to be able to hit that Umbrian outside of special type attacks, which we're kind of relying on now, but we'll see how we get on. It's gonna be a tough match. It's a really well put together team um, and can be very annoying, but we'll see what happens. There's the Tapu Lele coming out. Okay. I mean, I kind of don't mind this too much, even though the, the Psychic Terrain is going up. Uh, we get the Intimidate onto the Groudon. Um, now I wonder if it's worth tailwinding and just hard switching into Kyogre rather than you turning out because I I feel like if you're my opponent you probably want to fire punch and psychic into the tornadoes that would be my best bet honestly so I'm gonna <laughs> I feel like the U-turn would be really useful here, but at the same time, I don't really want to take a fire punch onto Tornadus if I can help it. Although, is it better just to lose Tornadus at this point uh, rather than Kyogre take a massive chunk of damage from? Yeah, like that's the other argument. Do you do? Would I prefer Kyogre uh, just to come in without any damage? And probably yes. So I'm gonna U-turn out onto the the Lele. Go against everything that I've just said. <laughs> but yeah, I'd rather a fresh, healthy Kyogre than a uh, half damaged, precipice bladed one, to be honest. Even though my instinct kind of tells me that Fire Punch probably comes out into the Tornadoes. I'm going to see the Lele retreat and Necrozma come in. Okay. Well, now we shouldn't lose Incineroar here. Um, and if the Groudon stays out on the field, that's way better for us. Precipice Blades coming out, Tornadoes not affected by that. Um, oh, we do take it just about, so that's good, um, and we'll get this U-turn off, so, really, this is probably the better the better option for us, for sure, and uh, we've got to watch out for Wide Guard, though, as well, that's the problem, and with the Psychic turn up on the field, we can't really prevent, um, can't prevent the Trick Room going up, uh, no, the Duskman didn't have White Guard. That's Zogaleo. So, what am I talking about? We can get Kyogre. We can Water Spout. Whether or not we Water Spout and switch in Incineroar could be an option. Hmm. But the Groudon's going to switch out for sure. And we're going to see a Trick Room set up. That's the thing. Um. But if we switch your Tornadus out to Incineroar, uh, we get at least an Intimidate onto the, the Necrozma. And although the Groudon will switch out here, which is just a given, I think, at this point. I think this is probably the better move. And we might see the Groudon just protect here and a Trick Room attempted to be set up. Um, but again, I don't really mind if that does happen, to be honest. And Groudon switching out. Yeah, whatever comes in is gonna take a heck of a lot of damage. It's gonna be Kangaskhan, okay. This might go down. Ooh, we're gonna see it Ultra Burst. Okay, so I, I, I don't think we're gonna see a Trick Room then. It's reverting into its um, Ultra Form. So what's about that? We'll obviously be able to take this and throw out a big psychic type attack that's going to do some tasty damage to us. Oh, we do see the trick room. This is interesting. Hmm. It's not the end of the world. Like, honestly. And Groudon's going to come back in now. Yeah. Uh, 
And I think what we'll do is U turn out. Oh, we can't really U turn out. I think well, one thing we could potentially do is fake out into the Groudon. Switch into Tapu Koko. We're going to take a big. We're going to take a psychic type attack from the Necrozma, which isn't ideal. At all. But we want to try and stop slow this ground on down as much as you can now tailwind being up isn't great it's kind of weird that you well i guess the ultra burst makes sense for the dragon type and to take the water spot a bit better um we do get kyogre out of here and get coco onto the field and there's a fake out into the ground on just shutting that down this turn Flinch, and then we're going to see the light that burns the sky. It's going to be into Tap Coco, and we probably will lose it here. But that does grant Kyogre a free switch in now with Groudon out in the field, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, we will have to cut this though, so we'll be right back, my friends. So into the Tap Coco it comes, um, and there's no way we take that ever, ever. But like I said, it does open the door for us to get. Um, Kyogre back onto the field. Uh, and we can snarl Water Spout the next turn if we would like to. Although, hmm. I wonder if the Groudon switches out though, I just press his blades. It's not intimidated. That's the thing. Um. What is going to be better to do here? Do we just see a double up? Um, I don't know if we actually do. I'm going to snarl. And I'm going to go for a, do a scald. Scald the ground on, I think. Yeah, better than water spouting, I think, because we probably will take a bunch of damage. Kyogre is like the fastest thing in the field, for sure. Okay, we're going to see the Necrozma just protect here. Uh, Groudon is going to go for a Precipice Blades. Kyogre going to be able to take this. We will lose Incinero, unfortunately. Um, and the Psychic Terrain going to be back in effect uh, this next turn. But uh, it's pretty tricky from this point on. Because the Trick Room will run out. Our Tailwind has run out. Now, Kyogre will outspeed probably the Necrozma. And probably the Lele in Trick Room, actually. So that's not too bad, really. So we can Ice Beam the Necrozma this next turn. Pick up the knockout there. So it has just protected. Trick Room still in effect. And the Lele, I'd imagine, is scoffed. It's got to be. So we could just Hurricane it. Or we could... Or probably better Hurricane it. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here not even selecting Tornadus. I'm like, it should just automatically come in. It's not going to though. Uh, so, yeah. There's the type of Lele coming in. Unless the Lele is not scoffed. But I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so yeah, we can just Ice Beam the Necrozma. Um, I think we need to Tailwind though. I do think we need to Tailwind. Because, is this the last turn of Trick Room? No, there's two turns of Trick Room. Hmm. Okay. I'm not going to go for the Tailwind just yet. I'm going to go Hurricane into Lele. And I'm going to go Ice Beam into Necrozma. I think we've got an Ice Beam in the Necrozma here. There's the Ice Beam. This should take it down. And it's all about where this type of Lele goes. It's probably going to Psychic into the Kyogre, I'd imagine. A hurricane, but we're all running at a bit of a slower tornado. If Kyogre can survive this turn, that would be ideal as a psychic. Come on, Kyogre, take it. Take it like a champ! Excellent. So that's good for us because now Tornadus, um, well, we can just double because we know that both of our Pokemon are slower than the Lele. We don't even need to mess around with tailwinding and stuff like that. Um, 
so yeah, we'll be able to pick up Hurricane Scald will be enough, and we pick up another victory, which takes us to 6-0 this week, which is excellent. Good start for us. Always nice to get a good start, and a uh, bit of a challenging match. Uh, Scald actually enough with a crit there to end it up in style and uh, take us through to the end of this episode, which it is now. I'm just going to say thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on today's games, on the team in general, where you'd like to take the team in directions. But uh, Trick Room team, we've played two. We've got through one here okay today. I'd like to play a bit more of a hard Trick Room team, but they're not so common in this format. So maybe we don't bump into too many. Um, and maybe that's the answer there for us, where we don't really need to change up too much. And uh, hopefully you can see a few more members of the team like Cortana as we go into the last couple of days this week so we'll be back with another episode tomorrow have a great day whatever you are up to whatever time of day it is whenever you are watching this that was a mouthful and I'll, uh, I'll see you all for the next one so until then guys take care and bye bye